This week we will continue our discussion of the hermeneutics of suspicion, focusing on Sigmund Freud. While Freud and Nietzsche are often grouped with Marx because of their suspicion regarding aspects of traditional morality and religion, their message is really quite different. Where Marx argues that human beings can, in fact, achieve their aims and realize what is fundamentally a divine nature, even if he abandons the language of divinity, Freud and Nietzsche argue that humanity is largely defined by wanting something which it not only cannot have, but which is, in many ways, incompatible with civilization. Both are all also very skeptical about the prospects for creating a just society, something which led Marxist philosopher George Lukács to say that they were mounting an indirect apologetic for capitalism, arguing that while it is flawed, it is the best humanity can do. Freud was a working psychiatrist and developed his theories in this context. His first major study was entitled The Etiology of Hysteria, which means the origins of hysteria. It was a study of 18 patients who presented unexplained physical symptoms. They also, however, reported being sexually abused as children. Freud concluded that this abuse was the cause of their later neuroses. Not surprisingly, since Freud's patients came from prominent Vienna families, there was quite a backlash against this claim, and Freud was advised by his mentors to retract the theory. He did this, advancing instead the claim that what his patients reported were fantasies that reflected a desire for sexual experience with their parents, and that it was the fact that they had to repress this desire that laid, led to their later neurosis. Freud then drew out the implications of this new theory for understanding how human beings are socialized. The theory went through multiple transformations. Here we will consider only its final form. According to Freud, human beings have two fundamental drives, eros, or sexuality, and thanatos, or aggression, reflecting the need, respectively, to reproduce and to eat. Freud believes that these drives are in con conflict with our distinctive adaptation as a species, which involves cooperative work in order to transform our environment, civilization. They must be sublimated or channeled into the capacity for love or work, something which is never easy, never complete, and leaves us with many scars. The erotic drive is directed first at the mother. This is true for children of both sexes, according to the final form of Freud's theory. Initially, the child is connected to the mother through breastfeeding. This is what Freud called the oral stage. During this stage, the child is not even really aware of being distinct from the mother, a state that he called primary narcissism. As the child is weaned, he or she retains this sense of identification with the mother, creating a structure in the personality that he calls the ego ideal. Success at this stage results in both a conviction of distinct identity and a sense of connection with others. Failure can result in continued narcissism, possessiveness, manipulation, and the lack of respect for boundaries. Once the stage is complete, the child begins learning that it cannot satisfy its needs. Foundationally for Freud, this means the need to defecate, just anywhere or at just any time. This is what Freud calls the anal stage. Success results in a sense of independence and achievement, failure, to achieve a proper balance can result in either an obsessive need for control or a lack of self-discipline. Ultimately, the erotic drive becomes focused on phallic possession of the mother, what Freud called the Oedipal Crisis after the legendary king of Thebes who accidentally married his own mother. This is resolved differently for boys and for girls. In boys, the desire to phallically possess the mother is repressed out of fear of castration by the father creating a structure called a superego, which becomes the repository of all the moral norms of the society and the individual psyche. Girls, as Freud puts it, are already castrated and abandon their pursuit of phallic possession out of a sense of inadequacy, which Freud believed was real, and instead seek to compensate for that inadequacy by seeking a man, in the first instance, a father. Because there's no fear of castration, girls develop a much weaker superego, and their ability to function in society is more nearly dependent on their sense of an enduring bond with others, which resides in the ego ideal. For Freud, this was a sign that women are less moral and more instinctual, and should therefore not hold positions of authority. For many feminists, such as Nancy Chatterow, have turned the theory in its head, suggesting that women simply have a different, possibly even superior way of relating to other human beings. What does this all have to do with religion? Freud wrote four books addressing this question. The first, Totem and Taboo, puts forward the idea that religion is basically a kind of neurotic obsession that emerges as we attempt to repress 
erotic and thematic drives in the interest of civilization. The first such task was repressing incest, which must be repressed if human beings are to form bonds beyond the scope of the nuclear family. In the future of an illusion, Freud develops this into a more or less complete theory of religion, arguing that religion is not only an illusion, but a neurosis, which was once necessary in order to sustain and reinforce the repression necessary to make civilization possible, but which, now that we understand scientifically the need for repression, is no longer necessary. In this sense, God is simply a reflex of the authoritarian father demanding submission and threatening eternal punishment if we refuse. He reiterates this theory in Civilization and His Discontents, which was written as Hitler was rising to power, expressing growing doubt about our ability to actually repress our violent tendencies. But he also acknowledges the possibility of an additional basis for religion, a kind of oceanic or mystical feeling of connection to everything, something which would be rooted in an overdeveloped ego ideal and perhaps dissociated with devotion to feminine deities. Finally, in Moses and Monotheism, published in 1939, while not rejecting his earlier theories, Freud argues that some developments in religion, specifically the radical monotheism of the kind that characterized Judaism, represent a step forward because they force a greater level of abstraction, positioning humanity to better understand and control its environment. What do you think? Is religion a product of neurosis, or does it help to mature and grow as human beings, perhaps even drawing us on towards an end which transcends mere humanity?